I want to give you guys a story. Remember a while ago I told you there was a black guy that lived with a white girl downstairs? And I said, I would do whatever it takes to get this motherfucker up out of here. Yes, he's gone. <laughs> yes, he's gone. Um, believe me when I say, when I'm out for somebody, I'm out for them. All right? Um... But yeah, he got kicked off the premises. And I'm very proud of myself and my efforts to get rid of him. I told you guys I was going to keep you updated on the status of that. But I haven't really talked about it. But yeah, I saw him in his bags and his shit maybe a couple weeks ago. And I have not seen or heard him since. And I've been getting a really good night of sleep because of that. Now it's this other black guy that moved in downstairs every other day i see him with a different woman all these women are you know, hispanic and shit you know but he's a typical loser so operation psychological fuck him up is going to start to happen <laughs> i won't say what i'm going to do or how i'm going to do it just know his life will be a living fucking hell. The worst thing black men could have did is fuck with the smart ones. That's a crazy You bitch. know, the Just ones like who know how said, to really do this shit. All when right? Summer kicks. I. Crazy shit start to happen. Will destroy as many as possible before I leave this earth. Mentally, emotionally, psychologically, I'm coming for you, black man. I'm coming for all of you that I don't feel are worthy. Cut through this alley. What's going on, tubers? It's 3.54 in the morning. It's Sunday morning. Saturday night for Sunday morning, 4th of July weekend. Damn, let's see. I'm going to stand by this light real fast so I can show you guys my Muhammad Ali t-shirt. I've been getting a lot of compliments on today. Can you guys see it? You see the champ, R.I.P. with the fish? No. -uh. Muhammad Ali, the greatest that ever lived. Greatest fighter to ever live. Look at it. Well, we're going to the store because I ran out of milk. I forgot to get that earlier today. So I'm going to have it with my oatmeal and raisins and shit. All my healthy stuff. But, um, what I want to speak on is that little clip in the beginning that I showed you guys with this uh, erratic, crazy sounding black woman. Now, it took me back to uh, like eight years ago. Well, around that time, that was probably nine or probably, yeah, nine years ago or something like that. When, when I lived downtown Long Beach and uh, there was this uh, first off I never, like I say in my videos I never claim myself to be a pro-black person meaning I'm not pro-black because every since excuse the language but every since I started fucking <laughs> my first girlfriend I've ever had was Hispanic she was Mexican so and then most of the females I've ever dated in my life as far as long-term relationships and shit like that have always been Latinas now I have my share with sisters too but that's the reason why I don't classify myself as pro-black because of that but I love my people you know what I mean and I support my people so, but what I want to say is, is that I dealt with an individual like that before. 
<clears throat> when I used to live downtown Long Beach that had the same mentality and she happened to live right across from me like next door at the top level and um she was very disrespectful but she she always had like a little attitude towards me in a way because I sensed that since my ex from way way back was from Nicaragua you know what I mean she was a Nicana Wednesday <clears throat> she didn't like that you know but she never disrespected me in my face or nothing like that but I will say is that uh she kind of like tried to make hell for me in a way like when I would receive FedEx packages and shit when I was selling shit online on eBay and shit like that it was always some kind of problem where I always had to contact the seller and have them reship something that supposedly I was that was delivered into the building and shit that I never received oh, shit doing a YouTube video and I gotta make this light so what we're gonna do is we're gonna park we're gonna park it right here for a minute before I even go inside Rite Aid so I can get this commentary out she would try to make hell for me because for the simple fact that she was a single mom she had a little daughter that didn't look all black her daughter looked half Mexican so <laughs> I don't know why she was tripping but the whole thing is is that she tried to make hell for me in a way and uh, at that time she had this one fool Hey, hey, so uh, back to the commentary before I get my groceries out of here. What I'm saying is that uh, at that point, she tried to uh, <coughs> make hell for her brother back in the day. And so when I saw that video clip, it was from this one brother named, uh, a YouTuber named The Reluctant Nobby. I hope I'm saying the dude's name right, but I'll leave the link in the description box for the particular video that, uh, uh oh, what's this? That I uh, was speaking on and shit, but, uh, yeah, so it was one situation where. I had one of them old school ass, cheap ass uh, Ford Thunderbirds. I had a black Ford Thunderbird and I had blew a gasket and I never got the damn thing fixed. And so it was sitting in the back of my uh, parking space in the back of the uh, apartment complex. And so what happened was, um, what happened was to make a long story short, it took me a while before I, that I made that decision that if I was gonna fix it or sell it. So, right after I had sold it, you know, my ex-girlfriend had moved in and she stayed with me for two years. And so what happened was she had a Jeep Wrangler. So what we would do is when we go get groceries and shit like that, we'll go roll together and stuff like that. And so it got to a point where she was like, if you're not going to get your car fixed, you might as well just sell it. So I sold the motherfucker. So this person I'm telling you about, she didn't have a vehicle, but her dude, the dude that would come over and smash and shit, that she would get in fights with and shit. <laughs> exhibit looking nigga. <laughs> he looks just like Exhibit. But uh, what happened was, she... Uh, Oh, they playing my song. Get a vitamin water. But what she did was uh, they had, she had it where her assigned 
parking for her guests was all the way at the end where the dumpsters is. I mean, where the dumpster was, like, facing towards the alley. So what happened was... <laughs> Let's see. She, what happened was she fucking um, had dude park inside my parking space. After I had sold my car and shit, I still have to assign parking for me and my guests. So... After we went to the damn grocery store and shit, and we coming home, I had to go upstairs and knock on her door to have it where dude move his car. To show you how much respect she had for me. So, at that point, oh, I gotta get paper towels. At that point, you know, I was like, yeah, fucking nasty, salty bitch. You know what I'm saying? To come at me like that. To do that. Knowing damn well you got your own parking space way at the end of the where the dumpster was. So the whole thing was is that dude moved his car and shit like that. And then when shit didn't last with them at the end. And then my ex had bounced on me and left. You know what I'm saying? Then she knocks on my door with her mom when it was time for her to move. And she wanted me to help her move. I told her straight up. I told her straight up. I said, oh, I I would help you, but, you know, I got to get some sleep because I got to work tonight. Because I had a little gig that was down the street that was a graveyard shift. So I let her know. And then she was like, she was like, okay. But then she had her lip out like, <laughs> damn, they had a vein coming out of her forehead in like disgust because I told her no. But that's what you get. You know what I'm saying? See, sisters got to realize that you can't just label a brother a coon because of the simple fact that he uh, has a non-black woman. And when I say non-black woman, that doesn't mean all the time that he always has a white girl. I don't even like white females like that. I ain't never in my life been in a relationship with a white female. So don't let my fucking blue eyes fool you. You know what I'm saying? It's just that I'm not into white women like that. I've always, like I said, I've always strictly dated sisters and Latinas. That's it. But anyways, like I said, dealing with that sister, she had that mentality, that fucked up personality that this lady in this video that I found from the reluctant Nobby. Oh, man. I know this shit look depressing, y'all. Four o'clock in the morning buying snacks and shit. When everybody else is asleep and shit. But hey, I've always been a night owl. I know what that graveyard is like. Actually, I'm going to do a video. I've been saying it, but I'm going to do a video that's going to be strictly for the night person. People who work nights. Because a sibling of mine who's been, uh, who I, I happen to be four minutes older than. You know who that is. <laughs> you get it, four minutes older than? My twin brother had told me some shit about some chick back in the day who uh, made it an issue because he worked nights and she had worked days and she kind of like was trying to get him to change his schedule around so he can be more it can be like they can be more compatible or whatever and he's like fuck all that shit so he cut her loose so uh i'm gonna do that for the night crew that's what i'm gonna call it night crew for the graveyard crew i'm gonna represent and ain't nothing wrong with working nights shit that's how we make the world go round. So shout out to the night people. You know what I'm saying? The night crew. Oh, let's see what else I need to get out of here. All right, then tubers. Feel free to sub. And I'll catch you guys on another one. Shh, -uh.